It's time for another giant Lego inspired build. And after the fun I had building this giant Stormtrooper mech last year, I decided to do another mech kit. And this time it's War Machine from the Marvel Universe. Hang on a minute. Embarrassing. Ah. Oh. You're gonna go back on your naughty step. I know a lot of you are gonna be saying, when are you gonna be finishing this giant Lego car chassis kit? Well, it's gonna come later in the year when I have enough space to do that. However, I will show you a sneak peek later on of a part that I built recently, and I think it's the coolest vintage Lego Technic piece I've ever made. Check it out later on. I really like the design of this mech, um, particularly that it has this waist pivot, which the Stormtrooper doesn't have, because you can't bend these at the knees or the elbows, so they're limited to how you can pose them, but that really helps. And I really like the design of these hands, the fingers on it, it was really cool. I can imagine mechanizing this and putting servos in the larger scale one, it'd be very neat. A war machine has his weapons built in, so in order to make this a fair fight, I had to build the blaster for the Stormtrooper. This is a part I hadn't finished last year, and I did a little YouTube short on this part being assembled. And of course, it's loaded with studs, which you can fire. Yeah. Now before I start the assembly, I'm gonna take a look at some of the more complicated parts to print and design, and also look at one of the problems I had on the Stormtrooper which needs addressing before I do this mech, and that is these joints, so let's start there. On the Stormtrooper, I have a PLA socket and a PLA ball. The problem is there's not enough friction between these two parts. So what I've done is created the ball in TPU, which is bolted to this PLA part, and then hopefully the friction between these two is much greater enough to stop these arms from sagging. One of the more difficult parts to print is this. And this forms the front of the cab, or the back of the cab, sorry. So you can see him sat in there. There's the front and the back is where he sat in, which is this piece here. A lot of people ask me, why couldn't you just scan these parts? Well, it's very hard because if you scan them, you never get truly flat surfaces. You can see the scan has lots of detail in it, but there's all sorts of problems. None of the surfaces are flat, some of the circles aren't round, and there's holes all over the place. If you try to print this out and fit it to any of my other parts, it just wouldn't work. So actually, it's much better just to CAD the part from scratch, or at least use the model as a reference. My friend Scott scanned that part for me. He then took it into a CAD package and modeled most of it up. Then when it came to printing, I simply sliced it into two parts, like that, and then join them together and glue them. So this part, for example, was built from two parts. This part here is glued to this part here, so they're both printed flat on the printer. However, when I came to this bit, I thought I'm gonna just start playing with tree support instead. So this one, you can see, was printed on the printer like that, so the trees are supporting just the parts where the pips are overhanging, and it's printed straight on the printer in one part. There's lots of weird complex parts in this model, like this piece here, for example. Very odd. I really love these fingers. This is one of my favorite parts of this kit. I don't know why, but I just find them really satisfying. It's kind of fun. This is in this translucent material, PETG. And I think I did actually have to print that this way up on the printer and add support underneath, but it came out really nicely. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay offer a range of services, including PCB manufacture and assembly, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, 3D printing in a range of materials, OEM and EMS services. Maybe your next project could do with the services of PCBWay. If that's the case, check out their website. There's a link in the description below to pcbway.com. Right now they're manufacturing a circuit board for my Mark II minifig lightsaber design. That project's coming up later in the year. Okay, that's enough talk for now. I've got a large box of parts sat down here and I can't wait to see it go together. So let's crack on and build something.
All the sub assemblies done and it's looking pretty good. Uh, these hands are looking gorgeous apart from the fact that I've made the fingers too big so they don't really close together but they are looking super cool. Check that out. This is all printed in Polymakers uh, filament who support my channel. The dark grey colour is actually Polyterra Ash Grey, uh, the Poly Light PLA Grey. So this is steel grey, so that was used for the fingers. For the body, I used this uh, stuff here, which was dark grey green. This looked like a good match, but in real life, it probably should have been a different colour. I've got one here, which is a silk gunmetal grey. Uh, I could try that and see how it looks, but for now, sticking with this. Well, because I've done all the parts. Let's get it together and see if it fits and see if it stands up on these new uh, TPU ball and socket design. I've reprinted the, uh, the joints, the pin that holds the two parts together. So now the top part is nice and stiff in there and it's loose on the bottom bit. It's a nice fit, but again, it's not enough to hold it in position. It is standing though. These ball sockets are much tighter than these ball sockets, so maybe I printed them slightly differently. It's kind of standing on its own. It just won't hold its arms up as expected. Uh, no, well, kind of. This one is a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. Body twist, nice, I like that. I really like the hands on this though much more expressive. These kind of legs just fall forwards onto the feet down here. But actually, the Lego model kind of does it too. So maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. That's what I'm going with anyway. Okay, let's see how this is gonna fit in here. Oh, do you know what? I think this might work. Let's see if I can get that closed up. Hands out. Yes, look at that. Peachy. It actually fits in there really nicely. This body rotates. Just makes kind of the poses you can do much more dynamic. Very cool. I've got a handful of ammunition here, so uh, let's load these up and see if they work. Yes. Overall, very cool mech, I think. Um, there's something about the design of this one which I prefer to the Stormtrooper. Uh, I'll get them next to each other so we can compare them. Right, nobody breathe. Oh, I said nobody breathe. This time I mean it, nobody breathe. <sighs> I mean, while the, the TPU and PLA joints might not be an entire win, there's certainly a huge improvement over this one because this just will not stand still. As soon as I let go, he's off. Come on, stand there for just 30 seconds so I can do one other thing. Do you know what? You're gonna go back on your naughty step. There, right. I tried to put War Machine on a naughty step, but it turns out that he won't sit down like the Stormtrooper mech because his knees or his thighs, sorry, hit his waist here. So you can't really bend the legs forward enough. Hang on a minute. I've got this back to front. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Look, this is his back. The butt talks. How embarrassing. Ah, oh, that can come off. That can come off. And that can go back on there. He might actually sit down now. Of course, now he doesn't want to stand up at all. So he's definitely going on the naughty step. Right, here we go. Let's see if he'll sit down now. Mm, no. I'll just hold him. There, I finally got him stable. I've given him a little uh, high chair to sit on because he needs a little bit of a boost compared to the Stormtrooper mech. I've also put a little uh, plate inside of the cab here so he can stand on something and he gets a little boost so his arms get a bit higher out the top of the cab, which is more similar to the Stormtrooper mech there. I'd forgotten to make his little ammo pack that sits on the back of him. I'd printed the parts, just hadn't assembled it. Cut, take two. I'd also forgotten to make his little ammo pack, which uh, goes on the back of the mech. There it is with his spare ammo in, and that just clips on back here. Please do let me know in the comments section which is your favourite mech. Right now I'm edging towards War Machine. It has a little bit more functionality and I really like these hands. And how would you display them? Are you happy with them sat down? Would you have them stood up? Should I make a stand for them? Should I lock the joints off completely so they hold position? If you have any ideas, do let me know in the comments. Before I wrap this video up, let me show you that Lego Technic part that's coming up later in the year for the car chassis kit. It's down here, let me just create a little bit of space. This guy over that way, this guy over this way. Check that out, oh no wait. Uh, no, that's not it, but um, while I'm on the subject, thanks for that. So uh, if you aren't subscribed already, please subscribe. But thanks for all the other subs who have got me over the years. And this is my 100,000 sub plaque. But that wasn't what I was gonna show you. Hang on a minute, it's down here somewhere. Check this out. Is that not the coolest giant scale Lego inspired part you've ever seen? Personally, I think it is. Awesome, I can't wait to get this car together. It is coming later in the year, I promise. But if you think that's cool. <laughs> yes, that's for another project that's coming later in the year. And that one is a beast. I'm not gonna say what it's for, but later in the year, I will be using this on another project. So stay tuned, that's it for now. Bye.